this is a Alcom sponsored uh, presentation and this is my disclosure slide. So uh, we all have been using vitamin D and we all have, you know, studied vitamin D right from our college days and we know that this is a fat soluble steroid hormone which mainly acts as a key regulator of calcium and phosphate metabolism and is also involved in, uh, you know, uh, maintaining a balance between formation and desorption of bone tissue, helps in prevention of uh, osteoporosis and occurrence of fractures. And now we know it has multiple roles. And, it, you know, after the discovery of vitamin B receptor, a lot uh, has uh, been understood about vitamin D. And it is now, we also know that it is involved in uh, regulation of genes involved in the bone modeling. Now, uh, term vitamin D includes uh, uh, vitamin D2, ergocalciferol and calciferol, which is vitamin D3, and it has two main metabolites, calcidiol and calcitriol. Vitamin D in humans comes mainly from the skin, you know, synthesized by the effect of sunlight on uh, uh, ergocalciferol and also from dietary sources where it comes as vitamin D2 and D3 and uh, uh, the now as I mentioned we have discovered vitamin D receptor and we see there are a lot of studies have shown that there is a presence of vitamin D receptor, the vitamin D hydroxylase in several tissues suggesting vitamin D could be playing a major role in multiple metabolic processes and genetic regulation also. So, uh, this is uh, the slide which shows the conversion from 7 dihydrocholesterol under UV light which converts it to polycalciferol, vitamin D3. D2 and D3 both uh, are transported to liver by in combination with D binding protein where it is further hydrolyzed to 25 hydroxy vitamin D and from there it goes to kidney where there is one hydroxylation making it 125 hydroxy vitamin D or calcitriol which is the active form uh, and is involved in increased uh, calcium mobilization from bone, increased absorption of calcium in intestine, decrease in PTH and also multiple other functions. Now studies have shown that their vitamin D may be involved in multiple non-skeletal functions including the uh, maintenance of normal immunity, normal functionality of the macrophages, activation of uh, T and B lymphocytes leading to immunomodulation uh, act, act by acting on the parathyroid, decreasing the PTH levels, uh, improving the insulin resistance by acting through kidney, suppression of uh, renin and RAS mechanism, helping in reducing blood pressure by action in pancreas. And also it has been shown to be, the receptors are found to be present in multiple tissues like breast, colon and prostate. So uh, there are now a number of studies which have shown that vitamin D deficiency may be associated with multiple diseases in multiple organs, including osteoporosis, different types of cancers, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, type 1 and type 2 diabetes, Autoimmune diseases like, uh, you know, rheumatoid arthritis and inflammatory bowel disease, depression, multiple sclerosis and so on. Now, if we look at the vitamin D deficiency, it is widespread, widely present globally. And India also, we are, you know, not uh, different from the global picture. Uh, we have very high prevalence reported anywhere between 50 to 95 percent in Indian population, especially in young adults, pregnant, lactating women and women over 50 years of age. This was a study uh, from Dr. Amrish Mittal's group published in 2010, I think, uh, which looked at the global vitamin D status and determinants of vit vit uh, vitamin D hypos, uh, vitaminosis and showed that overall prevalence in India is in the range of 10 to 20 nanograms per ml, which indicates that most of the Indian population is either deficient or insufficient in vitamin D levels. This was a study which looked at the uh, vitamin D deficiency in healthcare professionals across different states and again showed that more than almost 80% of healthcare professionals are also deficient in vitamin D. 
Now, I am basically in focused diabetes practice uh, and we were seeing a lot of people coming with vitamin D deficiency. So we did a small study at our center, looked at 296 people with type 2 diabetes and measured their vitamin uh, D levels. And this study included 167 males and 127 females with diabetes, average age around 50 years. And we found that the average vitamin D level was 14.98 in the people with type 2 diabetes that we, uh, you know, screened. And if you look at the breakup of uh, vitamin D levels, only 8.5% had normal vitamin D levels, which is defined as vitamin D sufficient, more than 30 nanograms per ml. About 10% had 20 to 30, that means vitamin D insufficiency, and 80% were vitamin D deficient. Vitamin D uh, role has become more clear after, uh, you know, uh, seeing the, uh, after discovery of vitamin D receptor. And uh, now we know that uh, uh, vitamin D has an important role in uh, regulation of glucose homeostasis in pancreas, in regulation of inflammation, and maintaining a uh, systemic, uh, uh, you know, normal inflammation. Uh, so, a non-inflammatory state at systemic level, skeletal uh, mobilization and metabolism. It has uh, receptors in muscle cells, immune cells. So, all these places are being looked at important sites for vitamin D action. The strong association between vitamin D deficiency in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes and studies have shown that supplementation with vitamin D can improve both you know, type 1 and type 2 diabetes individuals improve their glucose homeostasis. Vitamin D can directly enhance insulin sensitivity and it release it uh, from beta cells. It can increase the expression of insulin receptors in peripheral tissues, thereby improving insulin sensitivity and also can act through the immune modulation leading to uh, increase or decrease in uh, insulin resistance. So this is a slide which tries to explain the role of vitamin D deficiency. Now we, how does vitamin D deficiency occur? So there are multiple environmental factors which include sedentary lifestyle, insufficient exposure to sunlight or low dietary su supplementation. But at the same time we have epigenetic factors. There are genetic modulation or gene polymorphism affecting the vitamin D receptor genes, the D binding proteins and the hydroxylase enzyme genes and all these lead to development of vitamin D deficiency. Now once there is vitamin D deficiency, it leads to impairment of beta cell function. It decreases insulin sensitivity or increases insulin resistance by decreasing the insulin receptor expression in muscle and adipose tissue and also decreasing the expression of E part de delta uh, in muscles and adipose tissue. And also suppresses the adipose tissue growth and remodeling. Vitamin D also has been shown to impair mitochondrial function, thereby leading to increased oxidative stress. So all these things ultimately down the line affect beta cell function directly and indirectly by effect increasing the insulin resistance. Uh, in increase inflammatory process and increase uh, you know uh, immune uh, activity uh, leads to possibly promotes the destruction of beta cells thereby worsening the beta cell destruction in type 1 diabetes. At the same time, it increases insulin resistance in addition to the other, you know, changes in the insulin receptor level improving, leading to increase in insulin resistance and beta cell dysfunction contributing to development of type 2 diabetes. This study, this slide further tries to explain, you know, various mechanisms involved in the type 2 diabetes, the obesity and metabolic syndrome and also in the polycystic ovarian. So there are multiple pathways where vitamin D is acting, contributing to development of or worsening of type 2 diabetes, type 1 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, obesity, PCOD and multiple cancers. Vitamin D is, is uh, you know, uh, deficiency may also be due to gene polymorphisms which affect the vitamin D receptor genes, the D binding protein genes and vitamin D1 alpha hydroxylase genes which result in increase in the peripheral insulin resistance and decrease in 
uh, beta cell functioning. So uh, if you look at the vitamin D receptor, it belongs to the nuclear family of uh, nuclear receptor family, which is involved in DNA transcription. And uh, studies have shown that there may be D response elements which have been identified in the promoter area of the insulin receptor gene, uh, which are involved in the transcription control of insulin secretion. So this may be direct effect on the beta cell function. Then we know RXR or retinoid X receptors are ligand inducible transcription factors which form homo and hydro dimers with other receptors which include vitamin D receptor. And uh, the vitamin A metabolite which is 9-cis retinoic acid also acts as a ligand for RXR and is involved in the dysfunction of beta cell uh, in, uh, through vitamin D deficiency. Level of glutathione also has been implicated in as one of the mechanisms. Then there are other mechanisms through which the vitamin D deficiency affects the increase in insulin resistance and this can be due to the changes in the immunoregulatory function of vitamin D which is uh, you know compromised because of vitamin D deficiency, immunoregulatory function of vitamin D on insulin resistance and in through the you know, effect on uh, increase in inflammatory cytokines, again versus the uh, insulin resistance. Then uh, vitamin D may also be involved in improving the uh, insulin secretion from beta cell through the calcium uh, concentrations and calcium influx. We know that insulin secretion happens by increase in calcium influx into the beta cell which is, you know, precursor to secretion of insulin from beta cell. And during, with vitamin D deficiency, this whole, uh, you know, uh, calcium influx may be impaired leading to beta cell dysfunction. Uh, vitamin D deficiency may have direct impact on beta cell function as well as it directly increases insulin resistance through various mechanisms by decreasing the receptor uh, you know, expression at the peripheral tissues and decreased PPR delta expression at peripheral tissues. At the same, same time, it increases the pro-inflammatory state which further worsens the insulin resistance. And there are studies which have shown that if we do the vitamin D supplementation, people who have vitamin D deficiency, it improves the glucose homeostasis and to improve the insulin resistance, the levels of vitamin D required are shown to be anything above 80 and 80 to 120 uh, nanogram per ml levels have been shown to be beneficial. Now let us see some clinical evidence. Uh, this was a study which looked at vitamin D supplementation uh, on oxidative DNA damage and insulin resistance in elderly individuals with metabolic disorders. So this study involved 92 def vitamin D deficient individuals who were elderly were included in the study and this was a randomized controlled trial where half the people were randomized to placebo. And further these groups were divided into people with diabetes and people without diabetes and all were given 2000 units of vitamin D supplementation on daily basis. Now this is the trial design and if you see that supplementation with vitamin D was associated with significant increase in vitamin D levels both in people with diabetes or without diabetes who were given vitamin D supplementation while the control arm whether it was diabetes or non-diabetes there was no increase in the vitamin D levels. Now, in supplementation with vitamin D and increase in vitamin D levels, especially in type 2 diabetes individuals, was associated with decreased uh, oxidative damage to the DNA. And if you look at the metabolic parameters, uh, I don't think you can see much shading, and this uh, is, doesn't seem to be working. Can we have? No. This is also not there. So, if you look at the fasting glucose levels, there was significant increase in the, decrease in the fasting glucose levels in people having that vitamin D supplementation. There was in significant increase in the HDL levels and there was significant improvement in the triglyceride to HDL ratio in people who were given vitamin D supplementation, showing significant improvement in the glycemic parameters as well as the uh, lipid parameters. Another important thing was there was significant reduction in the OMA-IR 
from 11.68 to 7.49, indicating significant improvement in the insulin resistance. Now, study concluded the supplementation with 200 units of vitamin D on daily uh, vitamin D on D on daily basis uh, decreased the level of DNA damage, especially when uh, and the damage was uh, you know better. The, the impact was better in people with diabetes as compared to people who didn't have diabetes and the vitamin D uh, supplementation can reduce oxidative stress resulting from hyperglycemia leading to increase in HDL, in, uh, reduction in HOMA IR and improvement in the TG to HDL ratio. Another study which uh, looked at 6 month vitamin D supplementation on insulin sensitivity and insulin secretion in a randomized controlled trial. Again, these were the people who had multiple uh, metabolic uh, problems, randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial, single site, one is to one ratio randomization. And people were given 5,000 international units of vitamin D daily for six months. Control group was given placebo. The primary aim was to look at the impact on insulin sensitivity measured as M value using 2R hyperglycemic, hyperinsulinemic, euglycemic clamp and the second uh, Again, almost uh, 48 patients in each arm, 96 patient total and this after three months the study showed a significant improvement in the vitamin D levels which was sustained at the six months. And if you look at the change, there was significant improvement in, uh, you know, the uh, uh, significant improvement in the M value, which is the indicator of insulin sensitivity in people with pre-diabetes at three months as well as six months, and also in people with diabetes. And there was significant improvement in the insulin resistance. So, study concluded that high dose vitamin D supplementation for six months can significantly improve peripheral insulin sensitivity uh, as assessed by hyperinsulinemic, euglycemic clamp and beta cell function in these individuals and uh, uh, these were the individuals who were at high risk of diabetes or new detected diabetes. This is a very recent study published from Dr. Lou Mishra's group called Prevent Win Trial. This is published in Nature Scientific Reports in 2020. Uh, looked at vitamin D supplementation in overweight and obese Asian Indian women with pre-diabetes and vitamin D deficiency. This was open label randomized placebo controlled trial for 78 week duration, 120 women, 121 women aged 20 to 60 years with pre-diabetes and vitamin D deficiency who were overweight or obese were ram randomly allocated to the intervention and placebo arm, so almost 60 women in each arm. And at the end of, uh, you know, if you look at the change in the vitamin D levels, there was significant improvement in vitamin D levels over 78 weeks, weeks period. Uh, if you look at the right side at 78 weeks and you see the P values, actually this pointer is not working. Can we have another pointer? Hello? Any other pointer you have? Anyway, so look at the p-values. So there is significant improvement in the fasting glucose. There is fast significant improvement in the so significant improvement in the fasting glucose. Two hours postprandial glucose fasting was done. Ten hours, you know, after fasting, postprandial was after OGTT. A uh, significant improvement in the uh, values of uh, vitamin D levels and significant improvement in the uh, subscapular uh, sub uh, um, skin fold thickness. And this actually is the same result shown in the graph. So, significant decline in the fasting glucose levels happening post vitamin D supplementations at 78 weeks and significant improvement in also, you know, the first postprandial glucose levels. So, study concluded that 78 weeks of vitamin D supplementation, vitamin D deficient Asian Indian women with overweight obesity resulted in significant reduction in fasting glucose to our postprandial glucose, A1C levels, 
truncal subcutaneous fat levels and reversal to normoglycemia. That was also higher in people with endothelium. So uh, currently there is an ongoing uh, real world uh, study on impact of vitamin D deficiency in uh, insulin resistance in type 2 diabetes called RADIS study. This study will be involving 400 patients from 40 sites and looking at uh, the parameters of insulin resistance, vitamin D deficiency and metabolic parameters uh, you know in relation to vitamin D levels. To sum up my presentation, there is a strong relationship between vitamin D status and diabetes. A number of studies have reported improving diabetes control, improving beta cell dysfunction, decreasing insulin resistance, obesity and metabolic syndrome with vitamin D adequacy. Evidence suggests role of vitamin D in pathogenesis of insulin resistance including several uh, vitamin D related gene of polymorphisms and vitamin D related metabolic and immune pathways. Supplementations of vitamin D may provide you know, a suitable option for improving insulin resistance and beta cell dysfunction and for improving glycemic parameters. So with that I conclude my presentation. These are the various uh, references that we have used. Thank you.